intelligence officer. Moscow, they deny any link. All right, elsewhere this morning, a news conference is taking place at this hour to outline the plan for National Student Day of Action. It's taking place in 13 cities across across Ontario tomorrow. Let's go live to the Queen's very Park that and listen in. Ontarians have been calling for for years, but the election is now over, and that promise has turned out to be nothing more than political spin. Instead of the promised tuition fee reduction. Some students will receive a grant which equals less than the promised 30% of average tuition fees. Two-thirds of Ontario students are ineligible for this grant and will receive nothing. Two-thirds. Students in the most expensive programs, students who have been out of high school since 2007 or earlier, and students studying part-time are ineligible, among others. These are often the very students who need the support the most. On top of all the, that, the government intends to increase tuition fees in the fall of 2012, the exact opposite of their promise to, to reduce tuition fees by 30%. Students have been betrayed by their government. The Liberal Party promised a tuition fee reduction in an attempt to buy the votes of students and their families. Now many of those who voted have, for this promise have been left with nothing. We will not take this deception lightly. In just three short weeks in November, we collected over 40,000 petitions from all over Ontario, which were delivered to politicians in December. The petitions demanded that the government make good on their promise to reduce tuition fees by 30% for all. Shortly after, we heard that the government was cancelling three other grant programs that assist thousands of students who are ineligible for the grant. They also cut just under $50 million in research grants. Under McGuinty's leadership, tuition fees in Ontario have become the highest in Canada. Ontario's per student funding for colleges and universities is the worst in Canada. Ontario's students study in the largest classes. Student debt has soared to 37000 on average and $9 billion collectively. Myself, I owe $29,400 after paying my loan for two years and my interest goes up by $4.10 a day. Before even graduating, I have already mortgaged my life for an education, and unfortunately I am not the exception. I am the norm. Students have been betrayed by Dalton McGuinty's tuition fee scheme. Tomorrow, tens of thousands of students across Ontario will take action to demand the government make good on their promise to deliver a 30% tuition fee reduction for all. From Windsor to Ottawa, from Toronto to Sault Ste. Marie, from Guelph to Thunder Bay, students are protesting. There will be rallies in the streets, letters written to MPPs, and occupations of campuses. We refuse to bear the brunt of bad policy. So McGinty, don't break your promise. Drop tuition fees for all. So I'm going to introduce the rest of our panel. First, we have Graham Stewart from the Ontario Confederation of University Faculty Associations, OCUFA, to speak from the pa faculty perspective. And then we have Harvey Bischoff from the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation to speak from the perspective of what high school students are saying as they prepare to go to college and university. Well, thanks, Sandy. Uh, as, uh, as she mentioned, uh, I'm here today on behalf of ACUFA, which uh, represents 17,000 uh, full and part-time uh, professors and academic librarians at 27 faculty associations across Ontario. Uh, and, uh, of course, we're very happy to be here because uh, without students, uh, we don't have any reason to be around. So uh, their concerns are our concerns. Um, and every day we see the impact of the high cost of education uh, in our classrooms. Uh, students, uh, for one, have to work a lot more than they used to, and that means that they're less, uh, there's less time available to them for studying. They have to really stretch their time to make it work. Uh, they're less engaged with the extracurricular life of the university, and really they're getting a very different experience uh, than they did uh, even a few years ago. And there's uh, no secret uh, why students are bearing a higher proportion of the cost of higher education. And that's because the funding provided by the provincial government uh, has declined precipitously over the last few decades. Uh, it's about 25% lower per student uh, than it was in 1990. And uh, at the same time, we've had about a 53% uh, increase in enrollment. So it doesn't take uh, complicated math to figure out that uh, more students and with less uh, money per student uh, coming in, 
stay. All right. And uh, that, that's creating a sort of an acute underfunding situation uh, at uh, our institutions. And this is really threatening the quality and the accessibility uh, of our institutions at precisely the time that we need those universities to be and colleges to be engines of economic renewal. So as uh, Sandy mentioned, uh, right now in Ontario we have the worst student to faculty ratio uh, in the country uh, at 27 to 1. Uh, the average in the rest of the country is 19 to 1. And that has real consequences for students. Uh, that means that there's going to be fewer course choices. Uh, there's going to be uh, less interaction with faculty, which we know is a key determinant of student success. And uh, there's going to be these huge class sizes uh, that we see uh, all over the province. And no matter what anybody tells you, and there are people who will tell you this, that a professor, even a great one, cannot be as, as effective in a class of 500 students as they would be in a class of 50. And at the heart of it all, uh, this underfunding is pushing tuition fees ever higher because when universities can't get the resources they need uh, from the provincial government to provide a quality education, they have to turn to students and their families. And that's what's creating this uh, upward pressure uh, on fees. And for all of these reasons and more, uh, this is why ACUFA is, is uh, very pleased uh, to support uh, this, the day of action tomorrow. Um, and I mean, in the government has obviously recognized that the cost of tuition uh, is uh, too high, uh, which they have tried to address. But as we've heard, uh, far more uh, needs to be done on that front. And we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can uh, to make sure that every qualified student in the province is able to uh, attend a post-secondary institution of their choice. And in the coming weeks, I think uh, the people of Ontario are going to be faced with a fairly stark choice. Uh, of course, we're all on tenterhooks awaiting the uh, Drummond Commission uh, and uh, his recommendations. And depending on who you, uh, or what the uh, early rumors you're listening to are, uh, this could mean maybe a cut, maybe stagnant funding in higher education, but it's not going to be probably the investment uh, that we're looking for. And a lot of people are going to argue that we simply can't afford uh, to make the investment in higher education uh, that we need. But, I mean, really, given the economic and social importance of education, the way it touches all aspects of our lives, I mean, I think the only thing we can't afford in Ontario is to shortchange our students, to saddle them with debt, and to uh, starve our institutions of uh, resources. Thank you. Good morning. As Sandy I mean, we're listening my name is in a live from Vice a President Queen's Park a press conference talking about National Student Day of Action, which is coming up tomorrow. 13 communities right across on Ontario. It's actually going to be taking place right across the country. Student and communities will participate in rallies uh, to reduce tuition fees, student uh, drop student debt, and increase education funding. Tuition fees in Canada are higher than they ever have been, and student debt is soaring at above $15 billion. So, of course, we'll be following this story um, tomorrow. We're going to take a, a short little break right now. When we return, uh, time is at 10.11. Steve is going to have your mild forecast, and we'll see what our health minister has up her sleeves when it comes to cutbacks.